care about it, the possibility for you to believe in both the conservative ideas and the liberal ideas is existent. So all of the harm that the closing opposition wanted to talk about, about how you do not understand extremists, about how you do not understand conservatives, that's the exact benefit that these moderates are providing in status quo. So the harms of isolation that they wanted to talk about are mitigated under a model in where conservatives actually exist, like a, in a context in where like, moderates actually exist. No, thank you, sir. If it's that in particular context, then the comparative has to be in a situation in where like these types of conservatism is still going to exist because they were never able to prove why conservatives, uh, conservatives, uh, like conservatives or like extremists are going to come out in society even in a context in where those moderates exist, right? Because it's a question upon whether or not the society is going to like these individuals when they are still existing within the society. No, thank you, sir. We believe that that type of conversation, that type of religious ideals, is going to be beneficial under our side house because moderates are unique within their characterization, right? But second of all, we've also told you upon why this is beneficial for individual people with identity politics as well, which was completely ignored by the closing opposition. People can ask for more welfare in a context in where they always have to vote for, like, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, abortion policies. Like, the Republican Party is systematically going against the rights of these individuals when they should not be in the status quo. Individual people should be able to choose welfare benefits and then receive more economic benefits as compared to a situation in where they should not in, at the end of the day, right? Obviously, the, the, the only harm that came out was, like, they choose to be isolated, and that isolation is going to produce more and more harms, right? But, Mr. Speaker, they were incapable of either proving why that harm is actually generated, or why is that harm, why can't that harm be mitigated in the perspective of these moderates? We think that these moderates are in a better position to provide that conversation at the end of the day. Sure. Can you give me any real life examples where moderates successfully protect extremists? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's exactly my third question upon what is good for non believers, right? Because the last contribution coming from NCL was that, you know, we need more cooperation from countries like Saudi Arabia. This is the example, right? Saudi Arabia is actually funding moderate logistics because they don't believe in like extreme forms of radical Islamic ideas, right? They support the idea that conservative like Islam is a possible idea but they do not support things like terrorism. Considering a fact in where this type of protection is already occurring in places like South, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, they recognize that we should not support these particular ideas. But something that they completely missed out was that their argument of how like people are incapable of differentiating between like, extreme Islamics versus like conservative Islamics is absolutely supporting our side of the house. Because as they told you, as Chukyo, as Chukyo, not Hyung, as Chukyo already told you within his entire speech, considering the fact that people don't have context, right? considering the fact that people are in capable of differentiating like the idea of ISIS simply because it's like the Islamic state is evidence to prove that these individuals are more able to like cater to the rhetoric that exists, right? Considering the fact that when the Pakistani floods occurred and people were all vilifying the Taliban, the Taliban was the only individual terrorist organization that was supporting these individuals. When people only perceive the Taliban as an extreme form of terrorist organization when they're actually supporting it, we think that under our side of the house, these moderates are in a better position to provide more support. They're able to clearly differentiate the ideal of individuals, and that is a unique benefit that only exists within this particular rise. We're extremely proud to propose. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
some clarification, okay? We can see that being a moderate is a good thing, that you get to be socially integrated easily. But welcoming the trend encourages other people to do the same thing, right? And of course, not everyone will do that, right? And the moment that not everyone will do that, you actually make them feel or you actually breed exclusion and discrimination, right? And that's the main problem that we have coming from closing opposition. Now let's look into how opening government actually you know, entered the debate and started this. They talk more about, when you talk about religion, it should be more about being functional, right? You confirming to the society. We think that this is problematic because it goes against with the entire creed of democracy in terms of the principle of secularism, right? Religion, politics, and society must ex must not you know meddle with the affair of each other. But instead, what they want to do is that the religion or the religious people should be the one adjusting to them. But let's recharacterize religion again. Religion, as a you know as a basic you know concept, is anachronistic to begin with. It will yeah. always have dogmas that it will follow. Sometimes it will always goes against social norms, right? That's why it is you know that's why we actually value the principle of secularism. That the church should not meddle with politics and politics should not meddle with the church. And that's how we're supposed to brought peace. But there, what they're doing is that they want to go against with this entire principle, right? Because what closing opposition is saying is that if you don't change, then you'll be demonized, right? So basically, you're telling them you're not supposed to practice your religion the way you believe it is supposed to be practiced, right? Because they think the trend itself is a good thing, right? But we've been asking the question, what did this trend, how was this trend brought about anyway to begin with, right? Was it a natural good thing? We think that this was more of, you know, status quo, you know, bullying all of these religious people and how they were portrayed in media, in politics, even when it comes to legislation of the government, something that we're gonna deal uh, later. In terms also in terms of books and education, how nowadays we get to, you know, dilute that becoming an extreme, you know, Islam is equivalent to becoming a terrorist. We think that's actually problematic. And we don't like this kind of, you know, discussion. Because the impact of this issue is that when you look at the individual as a religious person, if they won't be swayed into becoming moderate, there are only two things that could happen. And see, discuss it. One, they become isolated, they become excluded. And the moment they refuse to mingle with all the society, then you have difficulty in terms of social integration, right? But worse. What happened and the things that we've been seeing right now is that since these people feel isolated and excluded, they want to be welcomed somewhere else, right? That's why they leave the country. Yeah, yeah. That's why they end up joining ISIS. And that's why we have all of these problems yeah, that we are yeah. having nowadays. And that's the basically the re main reason why, or the effects of us demonizing these people and simply saying that perhaps we should be moderate so that you won't be discriminated, just like what closing opposition, yeah. closing government is actually saying. Yeah, yeah. We think that's very problematic. But more than that, let's look into how domestic social political you know, aspect um, interplay in this debate, right? Because we find this very problematic. But before anything else, yeah. Even without the ro yeah. rise of moderates, even without the rise of moderates, extremists like KPK will always exist. So explain to us how the rise of moderates also leads to this radicalization that you speak Later about. Later I'll talk about how that's not a religious problem, it's a power problem, it's a political problem, right? I think that's the main problem of the yeah. entire government, equating terrorism to religion. We think that's very, very problematic. Now. Domestic social political aspect, right? I think closing opposition were clear on how this kind of trend oppressed, discriminated people in the present situation. We have proof, right? Legislation in France, right? Because yeah, yeah. France wanted people to become more moderate. In order for you to be accepted, thou shall not wear your burqa. No religious symbols must be worn in public. And that, to some extent, created backlash in the society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why multiculturalism even failed in France, because yeah, yeah. you rejected these type of people who exist also in your community. You yourself demonize them. And that's the kind of effect that, that you will get if you welcome the trend, right? But then again, closing opposition said, oh, but at least now, you know, they get to have, to be, to have a defender in terms of their religion, they have this political representation. We rejected this already from closing yeah, opposition, yeah. saying that the religious people themselves won't accept that you represent them best because you don't even practice your religion properly, right? Perfect. They don't feel represented. But then again, they said, oh, but more than that, we feel that these people gets to clarify that these extreme, you know, um, Islamic terrorists is not the same as what, you know, Islam should be all about, right? And we think that becomes very, very problematic because now the moment moderate, you know, uh, Muslim did that in the past, they branded terrorism and confirmed that terrorism was indeed a religious problem. And that's basically the most problematic thing that the moderate people are doing now because they want to, you know, cleanse themselves that oh, we're not that, we're not kind, we're not that kind of Muslim, okay? 
that, that's a different type of Muslim. And that's basically how they messed up or they matted up you know, the entire discussion, branding it. We think terrorism is a political issue. We think it's not, it's not all about religion. It's all about power, people using religion in order to advance whatever claims that they wanted to advance. And that's basically the problem that we're having on today's debate. But more so, let's talk about how it affects the entire international community. Because given this kind of trend, we get to see the main thesis of Samuel Huntington that the next war that we're going to see, if we keep welcoming this trend, is that you'll see a clash of civilizations, right? And see discuss this, how Saudi Arabia will hate us, right? Because now, nowadays, you know, since we have all of this media diluting everything, Donald Trump talking about how Islam is all about terrorism, you're making them support all of these extreme people. Saudi Arabia is not even funding ISIS, right? What you're doing in this, with this kind of trend is that you're basically dichotomizing Optimizing people either you it's like Bush all over again like it's either you're with us or you're against us right so that's why division in terms of international community like extreme you know conservative Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia Iran Iraq Syria Pakistan won't be able to cooperate with other you know liberal democratic countries so what we're seeing in this in the present situation is that this trend more than it creates benefits it actually causes more harms not only on the individual level, but in terms of social, you know, political integration of people and how we manage people. We've seen the Burka problem, right? But more than that, if we keep welcoming this trend, then perhaps, hopefully not, right? Samuel Huntington's point will be, you know, um, verified, or validated. And that's, and that's why at the end of the day, we think that we should not welcome this. We think that it only costs more harm. Thank you.